Who want a ticket straight to them pearly gates? So the first thing that I want to talk about, I'm pretty sure you guys all are well aware that Eddie is now officially for sale. Yes, he released early on the first for everyone who spent that extra 40 40 dollars to get the character early like that's crazy bro spending 40 dollars to get four dlc characters three days early make that make sense but besides that when you look up how much the character costs you will see that depending on where you live right there's varying currency but one thing remains throughout all of them when you go back to tekken 7 and you can look at the individual prices for those characters fakaram six dollars leroy smith six dollars there is a character in tekken 7 who does cost eight dollars and that is geese howard in my opinion i think this is because he's a guest character and that two extra dollars is going to the creators of geese howard now for eddie why is he two dollars above fakamram and leroy smith i think this is simply because all of the dlc in tekken 8 has got a price bump no longer will you be able to pay six dollars now the base price is eight dollars and if tekken 8 does decide to do a guest character that eight dollars you used to spend in tekken 7 now is going to be ten dollars in tekken 8 so i say all that to say that it once again bandai namco is being predatory not only did they add a battle pass a shop they're taking down mods but now they're increasing the base price for their dlc characters by two dollars come on bandai namco when will you stop Okay, but let's move on to the next thing, right? There's a lot of things that Bandai Nemco is doing. Some good, a lot of it bad. And this has reflected in the reviews on Steam. When the game first came out, it was very positive. Very now it's sitting at mixed reviews with a lot of people going back and talking about the skins the battle pass all of the greed that's being in the game but then also how the game is not being balanced there's a lot of different discussions going on about this game no matter which like subsection of the community you're into it's chaos like for example there's a lot of players who really like love the net code net code is what they focus on if you're a wi-fi player not accepting that if you are less than four bars not accepting that even when someone gets on a five bar they have massive problems tweets everywhere complaining about the netcode all of this chaos is still going on which led the person in control of the netcode or who's working on the netcode to say this the netcode of tekken 8 is better than the previous one talking about tekken 7 however it seems that they want to make it even better can you please post screenshots of your game online the part where the communication status is shown attached to this tweet why does tweet function as some sort of like hybrid system to Tekken 8. You got to report people through Twitter. You got to report bugs and glitches through Twitter. You got to report now your net code through Twitter. Like, come on, bro. At what point? Like, you guys just built this game. This game is like two months old. How can you guys not go into the game and see for yourselves what players are experiencing? But that's the net code situation. Now, while all this is going on, Tekken, the official Tekken count, they kind of brought back this trend that was popular in Tekken 7. When that game came out, a lot of you guys may not remember, but they did this thing where they put two characters versus another. Yoshi, Brian Fury, Eddie, Lucky Chloe, so on and so forth. They're bringing it back. This one is Jen versus Asuka. It says, isn't she like Jen's sister or something? I get it, right? They're trying to increase engagement and meme on the character and yada, yada, yada. But I just, once again, you know, I have a big problem with the story in this game. I think when you really dive deep and analyze the issues of it, um, it, it's a lot of them. And I think this is one of them as well, right? The fact that they keep saying this Jen's sister, I get it's supposed to be a joke and funny, but Asuka is a character who is severely lacking in development. Since Tekken 5, like 20 years ago, people have been waiting to see what this character can turn into. And now, at all that time later, her development is, I think she's Jin's sister. She went from being a cousin to Jin's sister or something. It's just more confusion in a character who's already lacking the story. And the fact that the developers don't see it that way, it just shows how like, I'm, I'm slowly losing faith in the story. 
basically. I, I don't think they're capable of telling a good story. I just don't. Now on the topic of story, a lot of players were under the impression that Story DLC would release the same time as Eddie, myself included. But with Eddie release and the Story DLC wasn't there, I was like, what's going on? So I did a little bit of research and I found this tweet from Harada going back then, where he was uh, kind of trying to correct a slight misunderstanding. Now the DLC story will be free, but do not expect Story DLC to release with every character is basically what Harada is saying in this. The Story DLC will release in the summertime after May is what he says, but then also it will be like a main chapter story. Eddie, he didn't have a character episode, so I think none of the DLC characters will have one either. I think it's kind of sad that he didn't because it would have been really cool to see what his could have been, but they're not doing that. So I just want to clarify that because there was a lot of confusion around it. Hopefully that helped you guys. You can pause and read Harada's tweet the whole thing if you would like to but the next thing that I want to move on to is the pre-orders you guys remember back when Harada was trying to get everyone to pre-order the collector's edition the deluxe and all that stuff right I thought it was very overpriced and it wasn't really offering anything to warrant that price so I passed Harada said at the time as it happens every time, these collector's editions usually sell out before the actual release of the product. Now, that was, what is that, August 22nd, so that's a couple of months ago. Tell me why this person here looked at Bandai Namco's website and one, the collector's edition, they're not sold out, but two, they're on a 50% sale. I was looking at this and I was saying, what happened? What happened to Tekken 8? They went from selling out every single collector's edition to now two months later after release, it's on a 50% sale. I think exactly what I said is true. It's overpriced, not enough value, and players are tapping out. They're not, they don't want any parts of it. And now you're sitting here with a bunch of these on the shelves of Bandai Namco's factory somewhere in the EU, and they're trying to get rid of it. If it dropped this much in two months, imagine four. Another thing that I want to talk about, so you guys remember the Tekken 8 Chipotle collaboration? Um, they teased it way back before the game even came out, I think, but now it's finally here. If you go to the website, you can see here it's Chipotle and Tekken 8, the official crossover. If you use the promo code that's listed here, you can get up to 500 coins. Now, first off, don't do this. Someone told me that they ordered like two things, they spent like 30 bucks, and an amount of coins they got was like 150, so they didn't even get the full 500 after spending $30. It's a waste of money, basically. Unless you really love Chipotle, maybe eventually you'll get to that 500 coins, but don't do it. And then also too, the other side of it, I don't know if you guys remember, but the players voted on which ingredients they wanted to go into this, um, into a special like meal for Tekken. It's called the Tekken 8 Battle Bowl. That sounds like most of the most generic, like uninspired meal like I ever heard in my life. Like, I don't understand. Like, Street Fighter did this and it worked out and Tekken 8 wanted to copy them. But I just think like looking at this, it's not, it's, I don't know. Another L in my opinion is how I would describe it. I have some tweets here where players are asking for major nerfs to hit the game. You just see a lot of different ideas like this being thrown around where people are saying they don't like the direction that Tekken 8 is heading, they want massive changes. It's crazy to see everyone saying the same thing and all I will say like is I wonder if the developers will listen. Everyone is kind of speaking in unison and in Tekken that's a very very rare thing. The only other time everyone agreed that developers should do something is when Leroy Smith was broken. Everyone stood up and said nerf Leroy and in two years they eventually did. For Tekken 8, everyone is saying pretty much the same thing. I wonder if the developers really will take all of this criticism and rebalance the game. I understand they have their own vision and they want to keep that intact, but when your whole entire vocal player base, because I understand there's a silent uh, majority who aren't online and who aren't interacting and commenting and tagging Harada, but 
everyone who is is all saying the same thing i wonder what the developers would do this is kind of just everything that's happening within tech and right now it's a lot of downs there's some ups but there's a lot of downs and for tech and eight to turn out this way is something that i never imagined never expected and they have to recover they cannot allow this game to be the same way that tekken 7 did where tekken 7 had a lot of problems and it was never fixed and the game basically just fizzled out it was still really hype 12 million copies sold pretty much but tekken 8 is once again facing all of those same bosses and they're struggling struggling hard right now